still on the topic of time management, we're going to look at time management techniques in this phase. Just become better organised. There it is. <laughs> no, it's not that simple, but we can get there. It can take a huge effort for people who are woefully disorganised, but it saves the most time in the future. Know what you want to achieve at the start of each day, each week, each month, and be dedicated to staying on that track. Forward planning keeps stress and anxiety levels low and contributes to being the most organised. Keeping a diary of the daily appointments and work schedule in a week to view can give you a good visual on what each day or week looks like. Filofax, great big trend in the 80s, <laughs> I think it was, it's basically a personal organiser for those that have never heard of it, but it's a more sophisticated diary. But take care not to lose it. Calendars are a great way of keeping the whole family's activities on and it helps to avoid clashes and double bookings. So you get a very good visual with the calendar what your month looks like and perhaps what's coming up in a couple of weeks time and that goes for the whole family. Alarms. A couple of ways of using alarms is to either limit the time spent on tasks or leisure browsing, more about that later, or to remind you to do something important. Goal setting, work backwards on this. So decide what you would like to achieve, then work out the steps you need to take to implement that goal. Then allocate the tasks. It's that simple. <laughs> but if you aim to do three critical goal tasks daily, then you can make very dramatic progress with your goals overall. The three minute rule. Adopting a three minute rule is the easiest way to keep your desk clear and to train yourself to become much better organised. If you encounter a task that will take around three minutes or less to do, just do it immediately. Honestly, it is a massive desk clearer. Just try it. Don't just collect tasks to put on your to-do list like you're going to get loyalty points for them. Action them. So if you take a call and have to look up some information, just do it immediately. It gives an incredibly good impression to others. And this technique is in my own top two methods to reduce my workload and anxiety levels. It's great. Try it. I call my to-do list the must-do list. It just throws a different light on it. It can be kept electronically or manually. And if you keep a manual list, you can reward yourself by ceremoniously crossing off completed tasks. And it really is like filing your anxieties away. The smartphone. It can have a powerful pull on users, too powerful, to the point of addiction. Leisure browsing is a time thief, although networking is very important. You have to keep a balance on this. Allocating ringtones to important individuals, say one for clients, one for family, one for friends, that can be really useful so that you're not leaping on your phone 
whenever it rings. And you can be selective about leaping on your phone when it rings. And at least you'll know the nature of the inquiry before you reach for the phone. Most email can wait an hour or two or three unless you've requested somebody to email you something. And work out who the smart one is here, you or that phone. Prioritising, it hardly needs explanation. Are you procrastinating on a task because it's just ugly, you just don't feel like doing it, or you can't, it's, it's almost painful sometimes when you have tasks like that. So decide exactly how important a task is before dismissing it. And a well-organized person is efficient, and that means getting tasks done, important tasks, in good time. So look at the task and see, is it pr a priority that you do it? If so, make it a priority. Not much explanation needed for this, but when you're using your car or even moving from your chair to another area, collate tasks so that you do the most tasks or the most tasks that you can in one journey from A to B. It saves a lot of time and it's a very resourceful thing to do if you're driving. Adopting a time quadrant is the other one of my top two magic time management techniques. And I'll find my laser pointer for this. There it is. And here is the time quadrant. There are only four zones to be working in at any one time for each task that you're working on. Decide where that fits into your quadrant. I'll explain. Leave this one for a minute. The first zone or category or phase is the important and urgent phase. And you might think, yeah, that's where I need to work most of the time. Wrong. <laughs> that is for your short term crises and problems. You shouldn't really be working in here much at all if you're well organised and you've managed your time effectively. And this means that this quadrant needs to be managed. You need to manage these so that you stay out of this zone. I'll leave focus for a moment and Zone three, you should avoid. It's about the urgent, but not important. And you do think, well, maybe if it is urgent, it must be important. But no, this is where you will become distracted and interrupted, usually by the smartphone. So you need to avoid being in this zone. This is zone four. This is not, well, it could be leisure time, but strictly speaking, it's time wasting activities that are not important and not urgent. Leisure time is important. And for this zone, we do need to put a limit on it so that our working time, our dedicated working time is not drifting into our leisure time. We have talked about the work-life balance. There should be a clear delineation between the two. So this needs to be limited. It's not till you start reflecting on the tasks that you're doing at certain times in the day that you'll actually know or be able to adopt this system but it's well worth persevering with. Focus, zone two, 
that's the important but not urgent and this is where you need to be working most of the time this is about long-term strategic goals and for me it's like preparing in advance well in advance for meetings for events so that I'm ready days before I have to so I'm putting some emphasis on this system because it really does work and when you find yourself drifting you can get back in here with commitment creating a daily weekly monthly routine can help with organizing so daily you could check your email at certain times only weekly you could have a board meeting with yourself to check that you're on track with your workload or your goals or your leisure schedule a monthly you might put in an extra half day of effort to do the tasks that avoid short-term crises these and problems such as getting the bills paid so that you don't have to spend 20 minutes uh, trying to get through to a call center or updating your accounts and there is more boss worker time there's only ever two states of mind when you're working in your four quadrants and the boss time requires focus if you need to formulate written content for example and worker time is for routine tasks when you fatigue at work in your boss mode but you still need to work you can switch to worker mode and what that means is that you do routine tasks which are still important and will ultimately keep you working in the second quadrant audio recordings this is the secret weapon if you are studying make audio recordings you can do this on your trusty smartphone so use the video function for just speaking and play your voice notes back to yourself when you're driving or when you're traveling on the train or when you're waiting somewhere but you can win many 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 hours of revision this way and well in advance of exam prep that is true zone two find extra time time hides in all sorts of elusive places number one just get up earlier if you have important tasks to do getting up early means that you can get those important tasks done before anything else in the day and after you've been asleep your mind can be fresh and focused and you can have more brain space so if you've got an important task to do where you need the focus get up get it done put the smartphone away or just check it sporadically I think lots of people need to wean themselves off their phones as I said it's important for networking but you can get locked into browsing when you can spend your time much more productively on something else I've just covered using dead time travel and waiting you might find that you have as much dead time in the day or week as dedicated time just ditch some tasks sometimes you have to just get rid of some of them 
um, you decide what doesn't really need to be done. It's liberating to when you're under pressure and you want to make time to just not do some of the things that you might have wanted to do or seemed like a good idea at the time to do, but that you don't need to do. It's liberating. Just just give it a try or, or file that job for a later date, diarise it perhaps to do in next month. Delegate. This happy person looks completely delighted to be receiving a pile of files. Delegating can be painful for many people. This I know. <laughs> uh, some people are annoyingly good at it. But consider that the person you could delegate to just might enjoy doing what you hate to do. If you never delegate, start getting into practice. It can save you hours each week if you allocate short tasks to others. It really can. And it, for me, the most painful thing is actually asking. So get over it. <laughs> you can always skill swap if you're completely stuck. And that's nicely reciprocal you're not ordering somebody to do something for you sometimes it feels like that but if you can reciprocate and do something for that person this can work extremely well especially for the important tasks decluttering it's essential to time management you you cannot manage your time if you are cluttered or you cannot manage it as efficiently as possible or as effectively as possible. You will waste time looking for things that are not to hand. You'll also go out and buy some more things that you just cannot find. So it's not cost effective either. And looking at the clutter causes subliminal anxiety and feelings of helplessness you cannot achieve if you live with clutter it speaks to you constantly so you need to block out a few days in your diary and dedicate it to decluttering your environment and it's actually really enjoyable once you get going and the key to decluttering is to have enough time to sit in your own chaos like a brooding hen until it's all clear. Don't underestimate how powerful this can be. And I will leave you that thought. The next presentation will focus on time management as it's applied to learning.